<laughs> Professor Bebonis, if I come back to the political point uh, that's also being made, Prime Minister hailed India as the mother of democracy. The Australian Prime Minister spoke of powerful democracies coming together and being strengthened together. You've also seen the narrative, whether in India or some of these indices that, that say that India is going down the freedom index. This, there appears to be a major disconnect. So is there, is there in your view, and since you've studied the subject, is there an inherent bias against India in these indices? The indices, are, obviously I've written and spoken a lot on this, the indices are for the most part very poorly constructed and their own data show that India actually has a much more robust democracy than their text reports would suggest. So I, I think we can't really take the indices very seriously. Of course, other democratic countries take India seriously as a democracy. That said, there is a problem. For instance, here in Australia, coverage of the Modi visit split among the major outlets. Uh, the Australian, which is uh, the News Corp, Rupert Murdoch affiliated newspaper, covered the visit mainly in terms of strategic issues, that India would be an important strategic partner for Australia. On the other hand, the Sydney Morning Herald, which is you know, the opposing group of newspapers, what are called the, the nine newspapers here in Australia, ran an editorial decrying India's, what they perceived as India's poor human rights record. So this narrative is still one of, that is heavily debated, out, hotly debated outside India. Now, you know, I'm gratified to be a part of this debate and to have the opportunity to bring data to bear. I had my own op-ed today in the Australian Financial Review, the main financial newspaper in Australia, saying that the India debate needs data, not drama. And in fact, when I met Mr. Modi, I, I gave him a copy of that newspaper and he was thrilled by the headline, not because the headline was pro-India or pro-Modi, he was thrilled about the headline because it emphasized data, not drama. And he kept okay. repeating that in English. That's Sir, really let me, what we Let me take that to India Salman Soz. Uh, Salman Soz, whether you can hear me or not, I'm sure you heard Professor Bevonis that the focus needs to be on data, not drama. And when there is a conversation about democracy being threatened in India, the Prime Minister made it very clear, India is the mother of democracy. Is there a narrative that's being built because of po domestic politics and outsiders taking advantage of it? Look, the Prime Minister, uh, obviously, he, uh, he has his own agenda, he has his own views, and he uh, calls India the mother of democracy. But uh, we, uh, uh, we perceive democracy in a different way in India. We feel, we feel the pulls and pressures uh, of this government uh, on a regular basis. I mean, there's a, there's a reason many people are uh, unhappy and are worried about Indian democracy. Just by building a new parliament building does not mean that you are a champion of democracy. You can say it. You can say it, uh, uh, you know, in Australia or uh, in America or wherever, but ultimately what matters is how do people inside the country, because we, we, it is us, we are the ones who actually matter in this debate the most. And it seems to me, uh, going, not going back to the Karnataka verdict, people gave a certain verdict which said that we are not happy. If okay. they were happy, then the Prime Minister's efforts on behalf of his uh, party would have borne fruit. They did the not. fact that and you that want, means, does that not show that we are a very vibrant democracy? No, 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 it, it doesn't. It doesn't. Let me explain why. Because, you know, just because we have elections does not mean that that is, uh, that, that is, that is a sign, but that's not a good, a good enough sign of a robust democracy. A robust democracy would be where media would be totally free. I uh, personally don't think that that is the case. And by the way, we may disagree with, uh, with a lot of these indices that come out internationally. When they, when they suit us, we use them. When they don't suit us, we don't use them. We, okay. we criticize them. So as far as I'm concerned... Okay, Th this time I've lost you. Perhaps you've gone on mute and it's not... You know, we're not silencing your voice. You've got no, 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 a mute on not. your own. No, no, no. It was no a, we're it not was silencing you. It was by accident. It happened because of my own. It was not. Opposition is totally of... free on this channel. <laughs> no, I'm, I, let me just finish my point here and then you can take over. <laughs> I was suggesting that uh, when the press freedom index comes up and it says that India is sliding, it's backsliding, 
and we are getting closer to China, it hurts. Frankly, it hurts. But you agree with that, so, that we are worse than Pakistan or Afghanistan. I'll get Sayyid Zafar Islam to, to respond to that. But let me just I, take this to Professor Bevonis, only on the number crunching, only on the numbers and only on the indices. You know, our press freedom going down. Professor Bevonis sitting in Australia, how would you look at it? Ambassador Sajjan Har, I want you to weigh in on it. And of course, Sayyid Zafar Islam. But Professor Bevonis, please go first, sir. Look, Gaurav, you, you, you know that I, I always comment with a, with a straight bat. And the fact is that press freedom in index, uh, press freedom in India is objectively very strong. Now, I say that objectively. That's a different from subjective perceptions. Many people in India have the subjective perception that they're not free to report. Now, that enters into the indices, and the indices then get published and people use it. Uh, when we're able to turn to objective criteria, the objective criteria all show India in an extremely positive light. That is you know, far better than any country outside Western Europe and North America. Uh, whether the subjective perceptions matter, well, of course they do, um, but you know, we can't ultimately argue with people's subjective perceptions. They're just that. They're subjective. Okay, fair enough.